Hello everyone and welcome back. Since we have been discussing about read-only memory so far, it's about time we have solved some numerical problems as well, right? Alright then, let's get to learning. Consider this problem, given that A5, A4, A3, A2, A1 and A0 are the addresses, consider the following circuit. So, this is the circuit we are talking about. Now, we are to determine the address ranges covered by R1 and R2. Now, let's try to solve it, shall we? Well, if you observe, we have 6 address bits. Now, looking at the circuit, the least significant 3 bits, that is A2, A1 and A0, are given as inputs to R1 and R2. Now, since we have 3 input bits, R1 is gonna cover 2 cube, that is 8 addresses. And so is R2. Now, these two ROMs are being controlled by this decoder right here. In order to enable R1, the output O1 needs to be activated. Now, for R2, we should activate the output line O6. Now, notice the most significant 3 bits, that is A5, A4 and A3 are given to this decoder because eventually, these are responsible for enabling these two. Now, activating O1 will enable R1. Hence, the sequence for A5, A4, A3 will be 001, that is 1. On the other hand, activating O6 enables R2. Therefore, for R2, the sequence represented by A5, A4 and A3 will be 110, that is 6. So now we have all the 16 addresses covered by R1 and R2 combined. Since the addresses are of 6 bits each, if you consider the bit positions, it is 2 raised to the power 0, 2 raised to the power 1, it is 2 square, 2 cube, 2 raised to the power 4, and finally 2 raised to the power 5. Basically, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 and 32. Because 2 raised to the power 5 is 32, then 2 raised to the power 4 is 16, 2 cube is 8, 2 square 4, 2 raised to the power 1 is 2 and we all know 2 raised to the power 0 is 1. So the first address covered by R1 is 8. As we have got 1 underneath 8, right? And addresses are contiguous in fashion. So the next addresses are 9, 10, 11, 12, till 15. Now in case of the first address covered by R2, we have got 1s underneath 32 and 16. So the address in decimal is 32 plus 16, that is 48. And sequentially the next addresses are 49, 50, 51 and the last one is 55. Therefore, R1 covers the addresses 8 to 15 and on the contrary, R2 covers 48 to 55, these 8 addresses. So that's it. We could always figure out the address ranges and for that, all we need to do is consider the circuit very minutely. Alright? Now let's move on to the next one. Now the second question states, consider the following circuit. Alright, so this one is the circuit we are supposed to consider. Now R, that is this device R, it gets enabled based on what is being fed through 8 address lines. And we have to find out the number of address sequences which R will be enabled for. Now let's try to solve it. If we observe, R's enable input is connected to a multi-input AND gate of fan in 4, which simply means it can accept 4 inputs. Now, since it's an AND gate, we all know that it will only be activated if all of its inputs are high. Now, interestingly enough, in the next level, 4 different gates are there. 
and two inputs to each of the gates equates to eight addresses. Now the first one is an OR gate. And if we observe the truth table of that, for two inputs A and B, the output 1 is produced in three instances. That is, the input sequence 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So, for the address bits given as inputs through the OR gate, we have three different sequences. Now, coming to the next one, that is the XOR, also known as exclusive OR gate, it has got two inputs. Let's consider XOR's truth table. Observe that we get ones for the input sequences 0, 1 and 1, 0. That is, whenever we give alternating inputs, we get the output as 1. So, for XOR, there are two such cases. Now, the next two address bits are given to a NOR gate. NOR is actually not OR. That is, if we complement the output of OR gate, we will end up getting NOR. Observe NOR's truth table. Now, remember, OR produces 1 in case any or all of the input lines are 1's. Contrarily, in case of NOR, 0, 0 will produce 1. That is, only the case when none of the inputs are 1. So, address bits given to the NOR gate will have only one instance of sequence. Now, consider the last two bits. These are given to a two input exclusive NOR gate. Now, in case of XNOR, we know it produces 1 when the inputs are same. That is, for 0, 0 and 1, 1 input sequences, this gate will be activated. So, for the address bits given to the XNOR gate, there are two more sequences. Now, the addresses are made up of these all 8 bits. As we figured out, for the most significant two bits, there are three instances. And for these three, there are two more, then one more, and finally for these all, two more instances due to the least significant two bits. Altogether, 3 into 2, that is 6, into 1, multiplied by 2, that is 12. So, for 12 different address sequences, this AND gate will get activated, which in turn will enable R. Pretty easy, right? Alright people, that will be all for this session. Now with this one, we have come to an end of our discussion of read-only memories. So in the next session, we will observe the second type of primary memory, that is the random access memory. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.